Well, welcome back guys, it's Jason here from the Oak Mountain ACOTS. Today we're going to give you some firewood processor pro tips. Stick around. Okay guys, if you've been watching our channel, you know that we run a Hacky Pilke Raven 33 firewood processor. This is kind of the entry level processor that Hacky Pilke produces and uh, it's intended for the small producer, maybe uh, a residential firewood burner that has a little extra money kicking around or they want to split the cost of this with their neighbor. But uh, you know, for an entry level model, it works fantastic. Uh, so the point of this video today is to go over some pro tips on how to use these processors so that you can get the most efficiency possible out of them. So I watch a lot of YouTube videos, probably like everybody else, and uh, I hear a lot of the firewood hounds talking about how they don't really want to move to a firewood processor because the wood needs to be perfect. It needs to be straight, it needs to be of the same diameter uh, for that to go through the machine well and to really make it pay. And I'm here to tell you that I disagree with that. Okay, so in the Scandinavian countries where that firewood processor is manufactured, I believe they have a lot of white birch. That's what they burn for firewood. And uh, we haven't really adapted and accepted white birch as a firewood here in New Brunswick at least, um, because we're really spoiled. We have a lot of uh, hard maples and oak and uh, beech and, and wood like that with higher BTU value. And that's what everybody wants when you're selling firewood. But if you're running white birch through the processor, um, it's beautiful to run through. It cuts easy, it splits easy, and you can put a lot of firewood up fast. But what happens if you don't have perfect firewood? Life's not perfect. Nature certainly doesn't uh, provide everything in a perfect fashion, in a perfect manner. That's what makes nature so brilliant, right? But uh, look at this piece of beach as an example. This beach has got uh, a big pink in it. Uh, it's got some rot. Uh, look at this growth here. Almost a 90 degree turn. Well, actually it is a 90 degree turn. That's straight in the wood. Um, this is not going to go through the processor that well. But guess what? I'm gonna process it. Ok 
Hey guys, here's one of the first pro tips that I've got for you. When you're taking that leap and you're investing into your firewood processor, whichever model you select, if it's one of these ones that's made in one of the Scandinavian countries, um, I would recommend that you invest into one of these feed tables at the same time. Now I've seen um, the little units that pick up one log at a time and put them into the throat of that firewood processor. You're not going to make any big money doing that. Um, you know, the firewood business has low margins, we all know that. It's all about high capacity, getting a lot of volume through, and uh, picking up a few dollars on every cord, right? So the first thing you need to do is keep steady wood coming into that firewood processor to make it pay. So, this unit here cost me about $5,000 about five years ago. I think they're much more expensive than that now. It's got uh, some drives on it. It's gravity fed, so you load up the wood, and uh, you feed it down through a log at a time into the throat of the processor, and away you go. I highly recommend that you add one of these to your arsenal early on. Now this table, uh, for our operation, and for uh, the wood that we're cutting here in Oak Mountain, which is anywhere from uh, 3 inch diameter up to probably 10 or 12 inch diameter, the processor has a, a feeding limit of about 12 inches. Um, that's going to be about a sixth of a cord of wood on that table. Now that's a lot of small diameter stuff, so it'll be a little bit less than that. But generally for us, one table load of wood equals one backhoe bucket of wood, and that's about a sixth of a cord. Um, so I purposely set this log up on top of two other ones. And another pro tip that I have for you is don't do that. Um, it's nice to get more wood on the table. Uh, so that you don't have to stop so frequently, especially if you're loading into a trailer. But that is just a recipe for disaster. Um, it just takes a second, not paying attention. You can get your hand caught uh, between two big pieces of wood when you're trying to get that down into uh, the processor. Um, if the wood is crooked at all, you can get a tangled up mess. You have to stop and get that cleared and get it aligned. And I found that it's just not worth it. Okay guys. Another pro tip, make sure that you have a picaroon around your firewood processor. Um, I'm using a Fiskars XA22, you use what you like, but uh, when you're advancing that control on the conveyor here, if you've got a log caught up over there, you need that extra reach, plus you can get a little leverage and just kind of lean into it, and it makes life really easy. So definitely recommend that you have one of these in your arsenal. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fire up the processor, Karen's going to keep an eye on this as we move forward um, and hopefully uh, I don't get hurt because that's what I warned you guys against but uh, we're just going to see what happens to this as, we're, as it's rolling down the table um, but I don't recommend doing this, it's just not worth it. Um, watch for the room being used and we've got a couple of crooked logs here right at the start and I'm going to show you how to deal with those as well. Okay guys, uh, I'm not going to be able to get an action shot of this, but this had a little sweep in it and it's the butt of a beech tree and you can see that it's a pretty nasty little piece of beech. Now there's some funny growth going on here, I know that that's going to split hard, but what I wanted to show you was if that fell into that processor like this and you tried to advance that to split, you've got some sort of a growth going on here that's going to split hard, that could get caught up in the splitter or it could actually put a lot of pressure on that wedge and uh, throw it back. Um, I've seen these things bounce right up out of there and, uh, and with a lot of force. So what I like to do is A, if I want this piece of firewood, um, I'm gonna process it through here. But if I think it's gonna get caught in that knife, 
I might just throw it in the rejects trailer and send it over to uh, Dad's place for him to split manually with his uh, with his splitter. Okay guys, on that, uh, on the end of that piece of beach, we had uh, a bit of a sweep and you can see that there was uh, kind of like a bulbous growth here, not a nice um, straight fiber growth here. So when I put that down in to split it, it had a bit of a sweep up and as soon as that splitter head hit it, it pushed it up into the knife. Now look at that, it's caught, I can't move it, I'm down. So what you wanna do when you see a piece of wood like this, if you don't want to stop your process and uh, lower your margins, throw that right in the rejects trailer over there and run it through your manual splitter. If you catch this early enough, you might be able to give it a tap with a sledgehammer and get it out. And if you didn't catch it early enough, you're in, in for a treat. Lots of ways to jam your fingers here. Like I've hit my fingers running the sledgehammer on this piece of metal before. You've got a guard here. If this doesn't come right out with a couple different tools, we'll end up stripping guards off and uh, we're into it here now. So you can, uh, you can waste 15 minutes quite quickly here. And that's why I'm saying, normally when I see a piece of wood like that, I put it right on the Redex trailer and we put it through the uh, split fire splitter that dad has. Okay, that'll hold that up out of the way. Now that one actually came off quite easy. I've had to use chainsaws and put relief cuts around the wedge before and uh, spend 15, 20 minutes trying to get a piece of wood out. So, the bottom line is when you have a piece of wood that looks like that, it's kind of gnarly, and it's, uh, you know, beech or, or a maple or something like that, don't try and put it through these uh, splitters. These splitters on, uh, on these Hacky Pilke processors, I think they're underrated for our wood. Um, this one has a five ton force, and that's not enough. So uh, do yourself a favor, put it right in the reject trailer. On to the next one. Okay guys, now this is a fun piece of wood here. You can see that it's got quite a hard sweep in it. There's a lot of good firewood in a piece of uh, beech like that, and I'm not gonna let that sweep hold me back. Um, I know that some people would just take this and put it in a rejects pile and they grab their chainsaw and they cut it all up into 16 inch by hand. I'm not gonna do that. I've seen some other people who feed it in like this. They'll have somebody run the processor and they'll hold that up like that so that it will go into the processor and then eventually everything lays down enough so that uh, so that they can get it through. There's a lot of weight there. You don't want to be doing that. That's just a good way to get hurt, pull your back or something like that. So here's what I do. Um, I'm going to set that up just like that. It just takes a minute. I'm going to grab the Husqvarna and I'm going to put a relief cut in that. Okay, so I've got the chainsaw here. I'm gonna try and stay away from metal in case I make a mistake. I don't wanna dull my saw. And also, I don't wanna be cutting around this belt because if I make a mistake and cut that belt, I'm down and uh, I bet that belt's a lot of money. But what I'm gonna do is right about here, I'm gonna put a relief cut in. I'm not gonna go the whole way through because that creates another issue. If you cut the whole way through and you have a short piece of wood, there's a chance but that's going to fall down here between this transfer system and that transfer system and then you're going to have to dig it up out of there. So what I like to do is I'm going to cut down here maybe three quarters of the way through. That tail's going to lay down. I'm back in business.
That's all you need to do. That's gonna come along here now and feed right into the processor. I might have a little bit of reject around where I put this cut if it doesn't work out exactly at 16 inches, but that's okay. A lot of good firewood in a pole like that. And I'm not straining my back. Okay guys, another pro tip. We're taking our wood down to four inches and that there might actually be a three inch diameter piece of wood. But uh, my customers don't like it when I split this wood down even further. They want uh, to pick up a piece of wood and have it feel a little bit of a heft in their hand and uh, know that when they throw that into the furnace, it's, it's gonna do its job. I don't know what it is about it, but uh, they don't like it when you split the wood any smaller. So um, what I do, you saw how fast I ran that uh, pole through the processor. I didn't, I didn't put it through the splitter. I just kept advancing that conveyor and I cut it very quickly. And now I'm just gonna take a minute and I'm just gonna clear my chute. Just takes a minute to do it. There's a nub, another pro tip. Don't put those through your splitter and uh, they're gonna end up Hopefully they would end up in the rejects bucket hung underneath the conveyor. If they don't, they're gonna go into your wood pile. When you dump that for piling, that's gonna be left in the field or on the ground. It's gonna create a tripping hazard. Um, something nasty could happen with that. At the very least, you're gonna have to pick it up and put it in a container anyway. So have a rejects container by the side here. And anytime you get a piece like that, just take a second and grab it and throw it in there. Now we're lucky, mom and dad will burn these nubs and uh, they leave the trailer right here for us. And when the trailer fills up, it magically disappears. But make sure that you do that as well. Now our, uh, our double stacked wood was uneventful. It just kind of settled down in, but uh, that's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is you get jammed up in it or the logs are crisscross and you have to spend some time moving those all around and time is money. So uh, I normally just uh, load the table up with one tier. Now you can get um, chain fed tables and with those chain fed tables, they're designed so that you can stack the wood on them. And that makes a lot of sense, but they're a lot of money too. Okay guys, so we're gonna save the best tip for last. And I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but come take a look at this. Remember this uh, big piece of beach that we looked at at the start of the video? 90 degree hook in it. It's about a 10 inch piece of beach. That processor doesn't wanna feed anything bigger than 12 inches anyway. And then you've got this growth here, almost like it was, uh, it was going to branch out, but then this piece must have died. I just know, and you guys know, that that's gonna split hard. 
So with a five ton splitter in that processor, that one's gonna get bound up. I'm gonna have to get a chainsaw out, put relief cuts in it all around the wedge, beat on it for 15 or 20 minutes to get it up out of there. It's not worth it. So just grab the old Husqvarna and do what you do best. Now we're just gonna throw that in the rejects trailer. That'll go right through the oversized uh, manual splitting process. And a 20 ton splitter will eat that for breakfast. There'll be no issue there. Um, and it's nice every once in a while for the people that are getting the rejects to get a decent piece of firewood out of it instead of just nubs, right? So we'll lug that over and throw it in the trailer. Now that's a big piece of beach, but uh, you know, it's short. I'm gonna take the craneman, I'm gonna put that right on the infeed of the uh, processor, and that's gonna go through that, uh, that hacky pilke processor very easily. Okay guys, uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, once you work with your machines, you get to know their capabilities and your capabilities, and you pretty quickly figure out what's gonna work for you and what's not gonna work for you. This works for us. I'm not saying it's the right way, but uh, or the best way, but it's the way that we do it here, and it seems to make sense. Um, one other tip that I wanna give you is, I run a new chain on that processor, and I put about five cords of firewood through the processor, and then I take the chain off and I put another new chain on. I don't fool around with sharpening it. If you're not perfect on your sharpening, then those uh, chains will cut one way or the other, as you guys know. And uh, that's not good in a firewood processor where the saw bar itself is stationary and it can't move left and right, camber left and right. Um, so it puts undue forces and stress on the machine. So, you know, I don't know what a chain runs these days. I, I buy half a dozen at a time and I've got some ahead, but we'll say they're 20 or $25. If you put five cords of firewood through your processor, that's $1,500 worth of firewood, give or take, uh, 25 bucks. It's well worth it to put a brand new chain on. I take those chains and I file them up and I put them right on my Husqvarna's and go to the woods with them. So I still get a lot of life out of them, but they'll never see the processor again. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap it up. If you made it this far, maybe you like what we're doing here in Oak Mountain, we sure would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you a thing. We'll see you in the next one.